you know, there's nothing worse than having someone give you the wrong diagnosis. They'll say, you have a slow metabolism, right? Because you can't lose weight fast. So when you're given this false diagnosis, then you're very susceptible to doing the wrong thing because then you're going to be focused on trying to find some thing to boost your metabolism. Well, that doesn't work. In reality, the problem is not a slow metabolism. Let me explain. So what is metabolism? You have all these chemical reactions going in your body, whether you're breaking down food into energy or building things back up into body tissue, like repairing things, like maintaining temperature and eliminating waste. All that is part of metabolism. Some people will tell you to create a negative caloric condition where you're consuming less calories than you're eating, okay? Eat less, and then you need to exercise more. And then after about six months of doing this, uh, you haven't really lost a pound. They basically heat up these calories and burn them, okay, in a lab to determine how much energy is in a carbohydrate, fat, and protein. But in the body, in a biological system, things work completely different. You have a lot more complexities going on. Number one, you have hormones. And that's really the missing factor is the hormone influence over your specific calories. So hormones are basically the communications in your body. And the very important hormone that relates to whether you burn fat or store fat is insulin. So the insulin message is store fat. If insulin goes up, you store fat. If insulin goes down, it's a different message. It's burn fat. So in reality, if insulin is too high, that is going to mimic a slow metabolism because as soon as you lower it, you start to burn fat. But if that hormone is just a little too high, not only will you not be able to burn fat, but the body's going to enhance the storage of calories into fat. You see, this video is all about focusing in on the real problem so then you can have an actual solution to fix it. If we know what triggers insulin and how to inhibit it, then you will know how to lose weight. And you're about to find out why that is so different than thinking you have a slow metabolism and you need to speed up your metabolism. It just actually will make things worse. Whether you're taking like caffeine or energy boosters or certain herbs that stimulate your metabolism, they end up burning out your metabolism. So before I get into the triggers, let me just explain what happens when this hormone insulin goes up. You're going to experience several symptoms, okay? You're going to find that you're hungry more often. You're going to crave carbohydrates. You're going to have frequent urination, especially at night. You're going to have a tendency to have more belly fat. You're going to have fatigue. You're going to have cognitive issues because you're going to have brain fog. You're not going to be able to focus as well. Your mood is going to be affected. You might feel more grouchy. You might have more anxiety and you're definitely going to have more liver fat. And that's really what's creating a spill off into your abdominal area where you have belly fat. You're also going to notice that your set point, okay, that weight that you just can't get below is going to be really stuck, if not raised. So in other words, let's say you, you do all these different methods of trying to lose weight and you just can't seem to get below 160 or 155. You're just stuck there. Well, that is called a set point. And insulin is really behind the set point, the inability to continue to lose weight. And there's one more really interesting symptom related to this. If your insulin is too high, you will start, or your liver will start making extra sugar, not from sugar from your diet, but from other things like your own fat and protein. That's called gluconeogenesis. Gluco meaning sugar, neo meaning new, genesis meaning the creation of. And you're making new sugars because of a very interesting situation where your insulin has been chronically high for so long, you develop this other condition called insulin resistance, which means your body has to compensate and make more insulin to create the same effect. So you have certain parts of your body where you're expressing symptoms of too much insulin, yet other parts of your body where you're experiencing too little insulin. And one common thing that you see, especially with diabetics that have insulin resistance, which they always do, is this extra production of sugar from your liver. And uh, you usually see it when a person comes off the sugar and then they have high sugars, especially in the morning. 
And they're like, where is this coming from? Well, it's coming from this insulin resistance situation. All right, so now let's talk about two different things. We'll talk about what triggers insulin and what inhibits insulin. If you understand both sides of the coin, then you personally can control your own weight, okay? So what triggers insulin? Well, it's carbs, okay? Carbs and definitely sugar. Okay, what inhibits insulin? Low carbs, that's the ketogenic diet. All right, another big trigger to insulin is frequent eating, okay? Like snacking and grazing. There's nothing more powerful to trigger insulin and stop you losing weight than the small snacks through the day because you're constantly triggering insulin all day long. And it's this chronic sustained high insulin that puts you in a situation where you're just not gonna lose weight no matter what. So that means one of the things that inhibit insulin is fasting, okay, intermittent fasting. This is why we recommend keto intermittent fasting, and that is so powerful to address um, what you think might be a slow metabolism. In reality, it's just an insulin problem. Another thing that'll trigger insulin is excessive amounts of protein, especially if it's low fat or no fat protein, as in whey protein powder, that on the insulin index is pretty darn high. Now, of course, that doesn't compare to eating sugar, but it's still a factor that could be a problem. All right, now on the inhibiting side, okay, what will keep insulin low and make insulin more sensitive and less resistance is exercise, specifically resistance training, okay? Working your whole body at a certain volume, and, and certain uh, intensity, uh, that's very, very beneficial for insulin resistance. And there's two other things that will not trigger insulin, okay? One is fiber, natural fiber from things like vegetables. Now, I'm not talking about the fake fibers like fiber yum, for example, which is a uh, synthetic fiber, which will definitely increase your uh, insulin. I'm talking about the natural fiber from vegetables not the fiber from grains, because grains comes with too many carbs, but actual really healthy type natural fiber. And then we have fat, okay? Fat apparently does not trigger insulin. And this is very uh, surprising to people because they've been taught that you need to avoid fat with a slow metabolism. Well, guess what? They didn't really have a slow metabolism in the first place. They had too much insulin. And fat is one of the things that doesn't trigger insulin. Interesting. Now, as far as eating fat goes, um, as long as you keep your carbs low, you're going to be totally fine. That's why the ketogenic diet has a, is a good percentage of fat because we keep our carbs really, really low and we keep moderate amount of protein. All right. Another trigger for this insulin is stress. Okay. When the stress goes up, the cortisol goes up. Another name for cortisol is gluco corticoids, because it's a hormone that also controls glucose to a certain degree, and it'll turn your proteins, even your body tissue into glucose. One of the side effects of high levels of sustained cortisol output is diabetes, because you're changing the protein into glucose. And it's not coming from the dietary sugars, it's coming from stress. So stress can make you fat. But it ultimately comes back to the insulin because the cortisol is raising the insulin. It's not the cortisol directly, it's, it's an indirect effect. Now let's flip over to the inhibitor side, okay? There's several things that can inhibit insulin and make insulin more sensitive and less resistant. That would be potassium, vitamin B1, and vitamin D, okay? All three of those uh, can greatly help you lower this insulin resistance situation. Now, another thing that can make insulin more sensitive is apple cider vinegar, okay? Take a tablespoon, put some water, drink that. That will really help your blood sugars. And then when you actually end up getting into fat burning, that's called ketosis. And ketosis by itself can increase insulin sensitivity. And then there's three last things that you have to be aware of if you want to keep insulin lower, because these three things will trigger insulin. Number one, inflammation, okay? Inflammation that comes from omega-6 fatty acids, like the so-called vegetable oils, the corn oil, the soy oil, the canola. Those are very inflammatory. Then you also have belly fat in general. Visceral fat 
actually increases inflammation. And that alone could actually increase insulin. MSG, monosodium glutamate, has the potential to increase insulin. It's in a lot of foods, especially in restaurant foods. And a lack of sleep can also mess up your blood sugars and increase insulin. This is why people lose more weight if they have a good night rest. All right, now you have the secret to bust through this plateau and overcome what you thought was a metabolism problem. In reality, it was really an insulin problem. And on that note, if you want more information about insulin resistance, I put up this video right here. Check it out.